Style your own hair without a mirror will not be seen so that we may present the following special program. Tonight, a half-hearted summer Christmas show, plus the written works of Rex Underwood III, and now, Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy. Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas in the middle of summer. Hi, it's the sweaty hot Rex Underwood Jr., beloved movie actor. You fell in love with me in that great exploitation film, Charles Manson Meets Hannah Montana. You remember that one? That was one of my favorites. We made a mint off of that one, didn't we? Oh, that's right. I was your manager. You got stiffed. <laughs> So anyway, you're asking yourself, why now in the middle of summer are we celebrating Christmas? Because the costumes are free. What do you think? This button a jacket, baby, and I'm pretty sure everything's going to be okay. So tonight's movie is this thing about a crazy hypnotist who turns gorgeous women into green, slimy monsters. You should see a doctor about that twitch. John has headaches. Well, anyway, here it comes, Creature of Destruction. Hold on to something.
Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. What is the ultimate science can offer? Truth. One of these truths is this. Ever since I first met Larry, I haven't wanted to date anyone else. Hidden within each of us is not only the capacity to love and hate, but to take that final step to be not only a creator, but a destroyer, a mad, unreasoning killer. Why cold germs can fly farther than Miss May can blow the feather. That final breakdown of our manners, mores, customs, that take us away from the millions of years leading to civilization, back to the animalistic, the monster that lies within each of us. And now, as is my custom, I come to that final prognostication Dr. Basso predicts. of the atavistic and extrasensory perception. I call on Dorina for a prediction. Striptease star Betty Boop will bump and grind until her new hip locks up. The corpse of Ed Sullivan will arise from the grave and return to TV, and no one will notice the difference. Historians will recover Lincoln's handwritten recipe for tater tot casserole. This very night, in our very time, and on the shores of this lake, the prognostication is murder. Frankly, it's pretty heady stuff for a psychologist. Some of those tycoons in there, and your father included, scare the heck out of me. <laughs> you want to get away from them for a while? Oh, well, now there's a brilliant idea. See what happens when you hang around me? I do. Let's go. Here we go now. Look in the sky.
There you are, my dear. So that grabby little man finally let you go. Oh, yeah? Any chance of giving him the brush off for me? That grabby little man happens to represent an investment portfolio of a million bucks. <laughs> Where's Lynn and Ted? They went for a walk down by the lake. I wish they hadn't. Oh? Why? You heard what Dr. Basso said. Something terrible is going to happen along the beach tonight. <laughs> big deal, big deal. After that demonstration, how can you be so skeptical? Demonstration? It wasn't a demonstration. That was an act. On the exact second, the show is on the air. Purely for the entertainment of our members, nothing more. He takes a girl and, and puts her in a hypnotic trance and takes her back to a former life. And you're not impressed. <laughs> Money impresses me, baby. Money. Not goo-goo eyes. <laughs> oh, uh, except yours, of course. Do you know where Dr. Basso is? Nope. Not unless he uh, disappeared in a puff of smoke. <laughs> Mother is just crazy about that Dr. Basso. Basso? John Basso? Do you know him? I know him. <laughs> you really put on a wild show tonight. A show? He took a girl back to her former life. I wish you had been there to see it. Well, so do I. It's possible. Really? Really. <laughs> Stay here. What is it, Ted? Who lives here? This is the house where Joey lives. You go back to the lodge. Call the police. Go on! Go on! I'll wait for you here. Never seen anything like it. Neck like broken in two, like a pile driver hit him. Same for her over there. $120 in here. That lets robbery out. <laughs> Seaweed. All the way to the door. <sighs> Carpet's wet here. See if you can find me some powder. Before we do any damage, we better call the lab boys. What do you think would make a print like that? Camille Salamander. Call the lab boys and wait for them here. I want pictures, lots of them. Here, have the boys rope off this entire area right down to the water. Come on. Officer. Yes, Mrs. Crane. Officer, I don't know if this is important, but Dr. Basso predicted something terrible would happen along the beach. Dr. Basso? An entertainer, a hypnotist we booked here for the week. He's a clairvoyant. There was a demonstration, and he said that some creature out of time was hovering over us, more than a million years old. I think we'd better have a talk with this Dr. Basso. Where is he staying? He's in cabin 47. We appreciate your cooperation. Lieutenant Blake. Yes. Lieutenant, I'd like to point something out to you. Now, I saw those bodies, and whoever mutilated them has a very special problem. Yes, I realize that. Tell me something new, Captain. 
I am a psychologist. Well, then, as a psychologist, what is your opinion of this Dr. Basso and his monster theory? That anything is possible. As a scientist, I keep an open mind. Yes, Captain, anything is possible. We'll see you in the morning. Oh, hello there. I am famous movie actor Rex Underwood Jr. Thank you. You shouldn't be surprised to see me here at the library. After all, I is legible. <laughs> I'm here looking at all the books written by my father, the late Rex Underwood III. No, he's not dead. We just say he is. It makes the holidays much easier. We don't have to listen to his endless screeds about how polio and COVID are hoaxes. So anywho, between public nuisance arrests, the old weirdo cranks out bestsellers left and right, and you can subscribe to this collection of the Rex Underwood III Every Now and Then Book Club. Great titles like Strange Things I Picked Out of My Toupee, Why I'm Boycotting TWA, Erotic Tales of Lunchroom Ladies When Their Hairnets Come Off, Rest Home Gigolo, and lies I told to escape the Rotary Club. A pile of these books will be dumped onto your porch the first of every month. And I will even throw in a PBS tote bag that I got for pledging to a John Tesh program once. Here's how to order. Uh, save your money. Don't be an idiot. You have been in a deep sleep. A very deep sleep. When I touch you, Torina, you will waken. You will come back to me young and beautiful. Why, yes, I'm as handsome as ever. <laughs> <laughs> and you will waken. Dr. Basso? Yes, yeah, Lieutenant Blake, homicide. I want to talk to you. I understand you put on quite a performance for the guests tonight. A honeymoon couple was murdered. What has that to do with me? You predicted something would happen in the beach area. Yes, I had a message. A premonition, if you like. When did you get this message? Tonight, during my demonstration. Many times during states of heightened concentration, I receive sensory impulses. Now, what do you hear? Nothing. Had you ever been to the couple's cottage or to that particular part of the beach area before tonight? No. Mr. Crane said you were talking about a, a monster. Yes. There was no doubt in my mind that she would come. She? She. What is there about this woman that turns everyone's head? A huge, indestructible creature that comes out of the beginning of time. She will strike again and again. Uh, darling, tell me something. Was the ground cold when you came up this morning? And she calls to you? I seem to be the only one who can hear her. And all this hocus-pocus is supposed to be scientific? The science of ultimate research into the hidden recesses of man's mind. Yeah, well, right now, Dr. Basso, I'd say you were as good a suspect as any. I don't happen to believe this scientific jazz of yours. Each man is entitled to his own beliefs, Lieutenant. Mine are on the record. So I've heard. You believe a, a monster lurks in each of us. I warn you, she will come ashore again. When? Alas, I do not know. That's a lot of help. I miss it. After midnight, how do you feel? You've had me in deep hypnosis, and I asked you not to do that. You were tired. You needed rest. I need to get away from here and away from you. I feel like I've been dead. 
You will never leave me. You cannot. Someday I will. Dorina, you mustn't talk that way. You are not only necessary to my psychic researches, you are necessary to me as a man. We are one. We are inseparable. I wanted a church wedding. The hate you now feel will turn to love. Dorina, close your eyes. I found you in the gutter. What were you before I found you, Dorina? Delmarva, chicken of tomorrow, queen. Nancy McGee of Berlin, Maryland. Ted, you're brilliant in your line. Uh, psychic research, whatever that is. We merely try to explain the unexplainable. I'm a simple man. I know only one way to judge a man's brilliance, and that's by the size of his bank account. <laughs> In that case, I'd rank right along with the village idiot. There's a million dollar idea in this headline. Read the last paragraph. Last night at Tanglewood, a country club resort owned by the retired wealthy investor Sam Crane, Dr. Basso predicted that something horrible would happen on the beach area. You see a fortune in that. I smell money in it. And it's right up your alley. It's yours as a wedding present. <laughs> You're not serious. I couldn't be more serious. Why, we can take this two-bit sideshow man and make him into the greatest thing in the country. Hey, I dig that. There's money in this prediction. Big money. And between us, we can do it. And where do I fit in? Why, you give him the stamp of approval, Ted. Captain Theodore Dell. Young psychologist says, Basso's experiment's amazing. Opens a whole new avenue into the understanding of the subconscious. Sorry, Sam. I wouldn't touch that kind of money. Well, let's start piling up. That'll take care of your scruples. And that's why Miss Ellis watches the boys and girls so carefully. I've been trained to fight this sort of thing, not make a living from it. You'll get the hang of it. Well, you count me out. Ted, my daughter's going to need money. I have no intentions of supporting her and her husband. <laughs> why don't you go look at the act tonight? When you see him in action, you might change your mind. You mean after what's happened, you're going to stage another one of the... Oh, sure. The show must go on. So think it over, Teddy boy. Think it over. Morning, Lieutenant. Hi, Nick. Coroner's report? Yeah. Strangulation. Neck bones were mutilated to a pulp. Any idea of the weapon used? Oh, well, it was like Good a... Good morning. Morning. Coffee? Yes, Mason, please. It was like a steel hook, just tore him apart. Any special marks? Well, the imprint of a talon on the back of the necks. A talon? A talon, like, uh, like an eagle. Anything from the lab? No, not much. No prints. Just some salt water stains, some sand, some seaweed. And it's such a pleasure. You think we're up against a, a monster? Ah, science fiction stuff but very good business. How would you like to be a rich man? I would like that very much. Yeah! You've got something to sell. It is a lovely pot roast. Television will pay top dollar for your act. I have no act. I have knowledge. Not a boy. Keep a straight face. <laughs> Hit him hard. Sure. Goes down the middle. 50-50. I'll back you until the thing gets rolling. Well, what do you say? I accept. Our deal begins as of now. We'll get the ball rolling tonight. I'm having some important people in. Now, 
play it big. Give them some more of that uh, out of the world stuff. And they love it. Give them uh, more predictions, big ones, another murder. She will come out of the lake again. And she must kill. <laughs> that a boy. In my hands lies a power that has been given to no other man. <laughs> boy, you are a salesman. Nothing like self-confidence. Now, this is business, big business. I'll have the papers drawn up right away. Make it big. I don't care what you do as long as we shake them. I am privileged tonight to have in my audience one of the country's most promising parapsychologists, Captain Theodore Dell. I'm sure many of you are familiar with his work in combat psychosis. Dr. Dell represents the School of Applied Psychology, my most outspoken critics. I invite him to join me tonight on the platform so that he may expose me. Is it about Dick? Why, yes. Go on, Ted. Go on up. Tonight, I will take Dorina, an ordinary American girl, back through time and space to her former existence. I bought this wig from Dolly Madison. Or was it Parton? We will journey together back into history. Three hundred years. Would you care to question the subject? Huh? Who are you? You are now traveling back through time, through space, farther and farther back into the past. Stop when you wish, when you see something familiar. Do you wish to stop now? Yes. Tell me where you are now. What is your father's name? Ronald Welford Rhodes. Where is your father's house located? Oxnam Road in London. What is your name? Marion Anne Rhodes. And the day and the year? Sunday, October 12th. In the year of our Lord, 1618. You are smiling, Marion. Why? Captain Anthony Mead is due. And he's going to ask for my hand in marriage. You will hear another voice, Marion. You may answer that voice. Not that idiot. The year is 1618. Who is your reigning monarch? James. Is he a beloved monarch? No. Hated. Beard. Who is Sir Edward Coke? Remarkable. Impressive. But hardly convincing. I have shown you one phase of my work. Marion Rhodes has related names and events that can be validated. But there are still more frontiers to be explored. However, the demonstration is over for tonight. I am being informed that the creature that visited the beach house will return again tonight. I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen. Dorina is very tired. She needs rest. So if you will please excuse us. A uh, doctor? Well, Captain, what do you think of my experiment? Yeah. Well, to be perfectly honest, I don't know. So if you don't mind, I would like to borrow your assistant, Dorina, for my own examination. In the interest of science, I'm more than willing. Now, if you'll excuse me, I think I'll get some air.
Members of our studio audience will receive an adjustable crosswalk sign where you can choose human or Bigfoot. Imported from Italy, a limited edition recreation of the sacred artifact, the Plastic Forts of Turin. Exclusive use of the word iconic for a full year. Feel free to run it into the ground. Everybody else has. Classic film fans will love cleaning up spills with Absorb of the Greek paper towels. Each roll comes with a majestic picture of Anthony Quinn on every sheet. Boys got a glimpse of the whatever it is. Our artist did a work up there. Ever seen anything like that? No. You're not much help. Lieutenant, stop fighting the truth. It is just as possible the boy saw the soul of a living woman transmigrated to her first primitive body. I know, a million years old. Simply because you've never seen such a thing, don't deny that it can exist. It exists only in your publicity seeking imagination. Think what you will. I think you're cute. But the boy saw it. Basso, you're just this far away from being booked. On what charge? Being in communication with the occult world? Ah, Lieutenant, because of my publicity-seeking imagination, I find myself with an extremely heavy schedule. So if you don't mind, I will excuse you. Dr. Dell is going to come to talk to you. He will try to hypnotize you. You must resist this. You will resist. He is our enemy. He is trying to destroy us. Your beauty must not be destroyed. You will love me as I love you. Now I must go. Good afternoon. You uh, certainly picked a hot spot for our first session. You know, I'd hope to place you under hypnosis, but I hardly think this is a place. It wouldn't do you any good. You can't hypnotize me. You've been instructed to resist me. When he gets on the subject of sex, I don't know. Look, you must understand I want to help you. Get you back to a real life. You've been living in a shadow. Just ask the questions, Doctor. Well, our book's going to the printer. <laughs> Mr. Crane, I think it's time we split 60-40 in my favor. Oh, just a minute. I don't have a minute. It's 60-40 or nothing. Well, so long. Well, I guess we can arrange something satisfactorily. I'm sure we can. Oh, yes, it's not a good idea to allow your family to go to the beach. Doc, don't press your luck. You better lay off that prediction stuff. One miss and our profits take a nosedive. Sue's folks were going to pay something to put her in junior college here in town for two years. So we'll have that. I'm certain our good fortune will continue.
Ginny thinks that she has the key to popularity, parking in cars with the boys at night. I know it's Basso. If I said that, you'd say I wasn't taking the scientific approach. It's gotta be. Two young kids, wrong place at the wrong time. But I'll get him. I'll get him. Were you asleep when it happened? The last thing I remember was Dr. Basso saying good night. Had he put you into a deeper state of hypnosis? Yes, he said I needed the rest. I don't need as much sleep as you guys. Ted? Well, go on. There's something wrong with me. I have the ability to kill. Most of us do. I don't mean that. I want to talk to you, Dorena. You heard about those two kids tonight? Yes. The whole town's in an uproar. Somehow I know Basso's guilty. I just know it. That sounds like an accusation. You bet your life it is. Any evidence? No evidence, no proof, no nothing. Yet I know Basso hates the whole world and everybody in it except himself. I believe he'd set a match to the whole thing if he could. You want to spoil the dinner for a whole family just because you're so hard-headed. How hard-headed can you get? <laughs> Look, I want you to conduct a, a clinical examination of Basso. Use some of your own experts. Now, this sort of thing could bloom into a full-grown carnival. And that's right up Basso's alley. The DA wants it. Look, I can subpoena you if necessary. Check with my CEO. Already have. Will you talk to Basso? I've done that too. He'd be delighted. You brought the new contact? Yes, this appears to be much more satisfactory. Well, don't depend on any more changes. There's going to be an investigation this afternoon, a bunch of head shrinkers. This is what I want. Official recognition. Listen, these are not hysterical women. These are real doctors. I am a real doctor. Oh, come off it. Don't give me that stare. I can look right back at you. You know what I see? I see a cheap fortune teller with delusions of grandeur. You shouldn't have said that. Let us punish the guilty. But you're a stupid man. Stupid! Stupid! Business is business, and I'm sorry I blew up. It makes no difference. I've got some television people in tonight for the demonstration. I'll try to line up a network spot for you. Part of your life is Marion Rose. Now you may rest. You will go into a deep sleep. The details which you have heard have proven to be accurate. After the last demonstration, I sent a cable to England. There is a grave with the headstone reading Marion Ann Rhodes, 1600 to 1651. Could have been planted. Yeah, she could be rehearsed. Could anyone have rehearsed the intimate details of her life in 17th century England? Her speech, her mannerisms? If anybody was to ask me seriously, I would have to say... Yes. I agree with Karen. She may have read extensively. Not so. She is no scholar. She never finished school. Do you think this is a hoax, Ted? My mind is open. 
Can you materialize her into a maniac that goes around the beach killing? Was that supposed to be a joke? Did it sound like a joke? <laughs> I thought I wanted recognition from you. But now that I realize the truth, it means nothing to me. This has been impressive, but meaningless. Thank you, Doctor, for a very interesting afternoon. Thank you, Doctor. And what I said about Basso still goes. But it's still just an opinion, Ted. I know, I know. But it's still one of the best opinions around. What is it you want me to do? Get rid of him. Good evening, stranger. Lynn, Ted thinks that we should dissolve our business with Basso. It'll make a million. It's a nice nest egg for you two. Thanks for the offer. I'm sure I'll never have another like it. What's gotten into that boy? Here now. Everything's going to be all right. Oh, hey, I'm still at the library, and I am staying here until you subscribe to the Rex Underwood III Book Club. Seriously, buy these damn books. We got to get them off the shelves. They're clogging up the library. People would rather read good books than his books. You'll get great titles like these. But the librarian said I could go pantless. 101 dad jokes written by lonely drifters. It's not a hijacking if you say the word please. And they're only called dimples when they're on your face. So sign up now for the Rex Underwood III Book Club. You'll be doing me a big favor. Thank you. Mwah! I love you all. Mwah! It doesn't matter. We'll be leaving the country tomorrow. I'm not going. You will be going. I'm staying with Ted. So you admit it. You will do as I say. Oh, no. I found the strength to resist you. You may have noticed I found my voice now. Ted's given it to me. <gasps> she kept yelling about how I couldn't be happy if I didn't stay a virgin. You are mine. No one will ever take you away from me. You are mine, and I am yours. You do understand that. Bottling things up inside is bad. Mr. Crane. How are you? Everybody's here. I have some very important people I want you to meet. They're interested. <laughs> Wait here. I'm aware that right now you're in his power. Dorian, oh, no. listen very carefully to me. It is Ted. It's Ted. I want you to be free. You must fight against Basso. I can help you. As he speaks to you, my own thoughts will join with yours. Good evening, Captain. Good evening. If you will excuse us, it's time to begin. <laughs> May I present Dr. Basil? Goodbye. I trust that those of you who have witnessed my demonstrations realize that the purpose is education. I'm going to visit school again some afternoon when I call for Joan. May I? Not entertainment. <laughs> you will close your eyes in a deep, refreshing sleep. Your eyes are heavy. I will count to four, and you will close your eyes in sleep. 
One, two, three, four. My subject is not herself tonight. She is too tense. You are tense. You want to sleep. You are very tired. You want a pleasant sleep. You are falling. Falling into a deep sleep. That woman is un-American. What's this all about, Crane? It's part of the act. Ladies and gentlemen, my subject is disturbed tonight. Her world is disturbed. I feel a menace to the people of this resort. I thought you'd want to know. I urge you all to leave Tanglewood and return to your homes. You'll find houses like this, run down, neglected. Give me your attention, please. I'm Lieutenant Blake, Police Department. I want everyone to do as Dr. Basso says, in an orderly manner. Now, go to your cars. When everyone is in a car, leave together, stay together. Hasn't this thing gone far enough? Have it your way. But you remember that I warned all of you. All right, now bring her out of it. Are you ordering me? Bring her out of it immediately. Suppose you get her out of it yourself. You pretend to be the expert. My servants will show you the chambers where you can do your work. I'd rather be in a bar in Singapore. What am I going to tell his mother when she calls?
Stand away. I gain the satisfaction that the one who shattered my world pays for the offense. No! No! <laughs> I cannot let you leave me. I'll double your salary. Soon we will be together. I can be more careful about coming home in time for dinner or phoning when I'm going to be late. I'd like to believe that I got through to her, but we'll never know. One way or another, she destroyed the creature. She knew that the creature was some sort of physical link to her past. In destroying herself, the creature could not exist. If only she wouldn't giggle. She searched for freedom and found violence, terror, destruction, greed. But was Basil right? Is there a monster lurking within each of us? Waiting, waiting. Oh, what a fine film that was. If you believe that, I've got an album to send you. Hi there, this is famous move, movie actor Rex Underwood Jr., along with my co-host, Spanky the Christmas Gorilla. And I have a brand new album I would like you to purchase with your own money for the holiday season. It is called Merry Christmas from me, Rex Underwood Jr. And instead of the same old tired songs like Jingle Bells, we've written some new classics that I think your family will enjoy. Songs like Grandma's Shake and Bake Reindeer. <laughs> the Ghost of Christmas Past orders a pizza for the Ghost of Christmas Future. And it's late. Also, we've got Santa looks a whole lot like the guy who held up the 7-Eleven. Or also, Burl Ives meets a space heater. I think that's a pretty great song too. That was Fred, Fred, yeah. And Gravy, the tastiest reindeer. So look for it at truck stops. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, ho, oh, oh. ho, Merry Christmas. Oh, ho, 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 you go. Not appearing on tonight's show, Scatman Carruthers, Sally Struthers, Mina Suvari, Mira Sorvino, Slappy White, Kinky Friedman, Rula Lenska, and Van McCoy and the Soul City Symphony Orchestra. Have you read the script? He loves it. It'll be coming out soon. Look for it on a pay-per-view